Hello and welcome to The Last Word. Disappointment with the government reshuffle has led very quickly to criticism of the Prime Minister. Today, in fact, practically everything that goes wrong, from 2G and CWG to black money and general incompetence, is pinned on Dr. Manmohan Singh. So this week we ask, is the media fair in doing this? Does this represent a marked shift in its attitude to the Prime Minister? And can Dr. Manmohan Singh recover his lost image? That's with the editor of the Business Standard and a former press advisor to the Prime Minister, Sanjay Baru, the editor-in-chief of the Hindu, N. Ram, and the editor of the Pioneer, who's also a BJP MP, Chandan Mitra. Gentlemen, let's start with the media's response to the recent reshuffle. Sanjay Baru, the newspapers have given it an almost universal thumbs down. The Times of India calls it a damp squib. The Hindustan Times a lost opportunity. The Hindu a case study in timidity and pointlessness. And your own paper, the Business Standard, said it was suboptimal. Are those fair comments or are they over the top? No, well, I think most of them are fair. And as the Prime Minister himself conceded, this was not the reshuffle that he really wanted. He has asked us to wait till the end of the budget session. So, in a sense, he has himself said that this is suboptimal. If he was optimal, he wouldn't be looking at another reshuffle. But I think the real problem, Karan, is that expectations were built up that this would be a major reshuffle. If those expectations had not been built up, I don't think you would have had this level of disappointment uh, or uh, you know, criticism. But the expectation was that there would be a major reshuffle. And it's against those expectations that you're getting a lot of this comment. Chandan Mitra, you heard Sanjay Baru begin with the Prime Minister's explanation that there would be a more extensive reshuffle after the budget session. But the media doesn't seem to be convinced by that explanation. It's discounted it. Is that unfair on the media's part not to accept the PM's explanation? Not really. I think the media was entirely correct and fair in this. Because, A, as Sanjay rightly said, there were expectations. This was, a this was the first big reshuffle. And we expected something uh, serious, uh, something you know, far-reaching, that people who have performed badly would uh, not be just shunted around, but actually dropped and new faces inducted to give it a new sense of dynamism. So, uh, I mean, uh, on both these counts, things have failed. And to say that there will be another uh, reshuffle a few months down the line is, I think, uh, rather strange. What does the Prime Minister propose to do? And the media has rightly questioned this, that people who have now been shifted from one ministry to another ministry, are they being put on uh, short-term notice? That uh, unless they perform well in the, their new ministries, they could be on their way out. That is going to be very unfair to people who have been just shunted out of their old ministries and put into new ministries. And if that's not going to happen, if nobody is going to be dropped, then what was the purpose of the reshuffle? reshuffle? How is performance a criterion? I think media has been entirely right. All newspapers across the board have raised these questions and I think they are entirely uh, right in asking this. Sanjay Baru, the real criticism, I suppose, is in fact the point that Chandan Mitra made that people who have been alleged to be corrupt or incompetent have not been dropped. Slots have been found, excuses have been created for retaining them in government. The media has interpreted this as the Prime Minister's weakness. But is the media right in pinning the blame squarely or solely on Dr. Manmohan Singh? Well, first of all, <coughs> Karan, I think to be fair, you have to prove corruption on the part of ministers before you actually drop them. Allegations are not enough and the one minister against whom there was adequate uh, evidence uh, was, was asked to go, which is Mr. Raja. As far as incompetence is concerned, well, that's a, again a matter of judgment. I think the very fact that the Prime Minister is saying that he wants to do a major reshuffle suggests that he does share some of this concern that uh, has been expressed in the media. But at the end of the day, the cabinet is a political entity. It reflects a range of political balances. And therefore, you know, one must look at what the politics of this reshuffle is and not merely in terms of you know, who's clean, who's corrupt, or who's inefficient, who's efficient, but also what are the balances in terms of the political balances okay. that the Congress party seeks. But I want to pick up at this point, Chandan, on the explanation that Sanjay gave right at the beginning when he said that in fact expectations had been high in a sense the reshuffle hadn't lived up to them and that's why the media is so critical would you accept that in fact in being critical because expectations are high 
the media once again is not being fair because in a sense the media created those expectations the prime minister didn't well uh, i mean i don't entirely go along with um, sanjay on this because i think um, there were genuine reasons why expectations had been built up now uh, it is not a question i take the point that you know you can't just go around dropping people uh, just because there are allegations of corruption but inefficiency was palpable in many cases and if people have not been fit uh, or considered fit to run particular ministries how is it that they are found fit to run other important ministries now what was the criterion uh, adopted in moving uh, x uh, uh, to another a ministry a and y to ministry b i mean that logic is unexplained and i can understand the prime minister's political compulsions in terms of giving some prominence to up and kerala uh, that's perfectly all right um, uh, no problem there but this was a, a, a reshuffle that involved only Ms. dr manmohan singh's own party the allies barring mr praful patel's promotion were left out of it so i mean does the prime minister not have enough authority even within the party to pick and choose select the right people for the right job the continue okay. to burden mr uh, mr kapil sibal with two huge ministries i mean i i really fail to see the logic of the reshuffle altogether sanjay baru let's come back to that point you made i interpret it as an explanation of the prime minister's behavior that expectations were high the prime minister didn't love, live up to it and the media on the rebound is criticizing him on the other hand the expectations began on the 8th of september when the prime minister met editors and told them that he was intending to do a reshuffle that he wanted to beef up infrastructure that he was particularly keen to bring young people in in a sense therefore the prime minister created the expectations and therefore he is to blame for having mishandled what he's been saying to the press but certainly i think the prime minister did create expectations he said on more than one occasion that he wanted a younger team that he wanted to improve the team that he inherited uh, in may 2009 it's true but you know this management of expectations is not the job of the prime minister it's the job of those who handle these expectations politically uh, for him and i think that is where there's some miscommunication we have now en ram with us who's joined us ram we are talking about the media's coverage and the criticism the media has focused on the prime minister for the reshuffle and we're asking the critical question has the media been unfair or is the media correct in seeing behind the reshuffle the weakness of the prime minister as well as serious disturbing questions about his leadership what's your answer is the media being fair or is it being exaggeratedly over the top the media has been on the ball on this and extremely fair because what kind of reshuffle was this it shows uh, it shows uh, weakness it shows uh, uh, an unprincipled attitude to uh, uh, to uh, questions of propriety and ethics uh, as we saw in the uh, in the case, at least two cases in the case of uh, mr patel and uh, veerabhadra singh Uh, who who have who do face who who have come under a cloud and uh, uh, so i think there's something wrong there are one or two good things but overall can, uh, a pointless and counterproductive exercise the media is on the ball can i put this to you and ram the media seems to blame dr manmohan singh the prime minister but we all know that he doesn't have a free hand that in fact he had to work at least in tandem perhaps even under the direction of mrs gandhi should the media therefore not be at least sharing the blame between the two a bit more than it is is it fair to pin it squarely on the prime minister alone karan the prime minister is responsible is head of the government and therefore bears the brunt of responsibility we don't know quite what sonia gandhi's role in this is of course uh, there is a major role but we don't know the extent of it so that's the one reason why the uh, the obvious target is the prime minister because he is responsible more than anyone else for okay. who's in the government and who's not